Hey guys, I'm Sherry Kamnachi today, Watcher of Realms. Welcome to the video, guys. Hopefully it finds you all doing well. We're going to continue the series of top 10 in each class of the game. I'm actually thinking about redoing, perhaps, my mage video so I can put it in order from 10 to 1. Power ranking the best mages, or in this case, today's video, the best defenders, just like we did with Marksman. Uh, so, we got this comment today that I saw. Ethan asking, hello, Sir Ash. Why, thank you, Sir Ash. I like the sound of that. Uh, congratulations on your summons. I forgot to ask in your top 10 marksman video. I will ask here instead. May we have the top 10 defenders. We have so few defenders, yet we're not sure who to invest in. Thank you, Sir Ash. You know what, man? Let's go ahead. You call me, sir. You get whatever you want, man. Let's go ahead and talk about the best 10 defenders in the game, starting with number 10. So number 10 is gonna be Aveline. She is an epic defender in the game. Her cost is 18, her block is three. Block obviously gonna be a key emphasis and important on every defender in the game. How many enemies are they preventing from passing them? So Aveline is pretty cool because she has, well, a high block and control. But the reason that we like her so much is her uh, very low cost on Iron Stomp, right? So she's getting back to this really frequently. Uh, it triggers a lot. 300 uh, in terms of the rage cost there and that deals aoe damage and more importantly a stun on blocked targets and then the tough by nature increases her defense permanently by five and then scaling up percentage which just plays into her role as a very capable incompetent defender in the early in the mid game she does fall off kind of in the end game because well her stats like a lot of epics but not all that we talk about in today's video just isn't going to scale as well to the end uh so she's good for like a lot of these heroes uh for campaign for for fair trial for gear raid 2 and for single target arena uh let's move on to number nine Number nine is going to be a staple for many of you guys, I am sure. And it's I sold, I sold, I sold, -y, I sold, -y, I sold. Sold to Mr. Ash. You know me, I always butcher names. So she's a lord, guys. She is a lord from the North Throne. You can see her lord ability right here. She increases her defense for each enemy block. She has a three block and 18 cost as well. When we look at her abilities here, uh, the shield wall, right? Shield wall, pretty dang solid. Increases block for every ally in range by one and applies a physical damage and a magic damage reduction to them. This is a very, very good alt, obviously, on this defender. Basically, exactly what we want, increasing that block uh, in, and also debuffing at the same time. Now, she benefits from the block artifact as well. I think Olog's Wall, it's called. So definitely pick that up, right? Anything that can increase her block, she's going to be even better. So she has a good uh, shield uh, ability here on her Lord ability, excuse me. Uh, uh, the more faction allies there are, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what do we get? Periodically grants all faction allies a shield equal to 20% of their max HP for 20 seconds. The more faction allies, the more frequently it takes effect. So really can have a great snowball effect here as well. She's super, super strong in the early, in the mid game. Again, she's tails off a little bit, but you can lean on her for a long time with her high block. Her talent gains 6% defense for every enemy blocked, stacking up to five times. So she really supports herself the more she's blocking along with that ultimate and the lord skill so definitely a very very capable and worth investing in epic defender Number eight is going to be Regulus. So Regulus is a guy that I have used extensively. I'm a big fan. I didn't want to inject my personal biases and rank all of the heroes that I use the most at the very, very top, although that probably is still kind of the case here. Uh, either way, guys, Regulus is a very unique uh, uh, defender here, right? Uh, he has a unique ability to share the damage around him. See, damage sharing here. So we look on this, uh, this ultimate, excuse me, increases Regulus max HP by 40%, while sharing 40% of damage dealt to allies surrounding him for 12 seconds. So a little ally protect, and you can skill that up as well to make it even more formidable ally protect on that ultimate, okay? Uh, really cool. He also has a stun ability in his kit for every 14 instances of damage taken. Inflict stun on all block targets, dealing 110% damage. This effect can be triggered up to one time every 10 seconds. So it's really nice and handy to have that stun ability as well. Uh, again, his block is three. His cost is 19. On his second 
second passive, when his HP drops below 10%, he summons a Holy Shelter and becomes immune to all damage for eight seconds. Uh, only can be used one time on deployment, but that helps keep him alive, especially with all that extra damage. Uh, he's not the tankiest defender in the game, which is why he's ranked relatively low, even though I love this dude. Uh, so you gotta worry about keeping him alive, especially in the end game. But overall, the invincibility plus the damage sharing does make him unique and definitely a defender worth investing in, right? Campaign, uh, Trial, Tide, Gear Raid 2, Sustained DPS, Arena as well are all the areas that I use this dude. Coming in at number seven... It is Captain Reeve. So Captain Reeve is a really cool kind of uh, undead fisherman type dude. He's a cultist. The thing is, he's only available in special events. He is maybe, I don't want to say less of a defender, but less of a defender based on everybody else that we're talking about for the most part in today's video. He's really a control and a DPS champion, okay? So a little bit less tankage, a little bit more control. His talent is for every four enemies uh, killed, increases attack speed by 10 permanently up to 100. He does have a three block and a 19 cost. I do not have this dude. I want to be real with you guys, but he does have stun, right? Which we love. And he also brings slow on five enemies in range on his pact with the drowned passive okay so definitely a cool champion i wish i did have him uh he has the bond skill as a, as well excuse me with razak uh he looks cool. Do you guys have him? Let me know. I ranked him based on, you know, all the guides that I could read. But again, no first-hand experience with this hero, unfortunately. He's definitely cool that he deal deals magic damage as well. It definitely makes him unique uh, based on all the other defenders. So magic, magic damage on his base attack and that slow makes him viable in gear raid 1, gear raid 2, uh, tied in trial as well. Coming in at number six, guys, is King Hars. So King Hars is a defender with a 19 cost, a three block. He is a lord as well, uh, the spirit of the north too on his lord skill. And you can see added to all the awesome stuff that he has at the end, the defense of shielded faction allies is increased by 20%. This dude is all about the shield. So a very, very good lord defender in the game. On his talent, when he's shielded, his attack has a 20% chance to inflict the enemy with freeze so again this guy's entire kit revolves around a lot of freeze synergy on his ultimate fury of winter deals aoe damage 120 percent of attack to surrounding enemies inflicting freeze and gaining a shield that can absorb damage for 50 uh, 50 percent of the max hp that lasts for eight seconds okay on his passive when the hero has any type of shield reduces physical damage taken by 15 percent so again all about the shield on this dude so he is best when paired with other shields either healers support or champions out there my favorite pairing is vortex in king hars that way we're getting even more shield on top of just relying on his ultimate so definitely consider putting him with a vortex i think it's a really great combo and it helps out everybody a very very good defender lord Coming in at number five is Baron. Ooh, I love me some Baron. He was one of my first defenders, so maybe I'm a little bit biased here. The cool thing about this dude is A, he's Nightmare, so uh, automatic synergy with Wrath, who we all have, who is an epic lord as well, so we can get a boost out of him, just basically out of the gate, right? The coolest thing about Baron, why he's ahead of a lot of legendaries, might surprise some of you guys, is he has a super large shield on the evil armor, right? Uh, Cast a shield that can absorb damage equal to 70% of max HP for 10 seconds when the shield disappears it gets broken deals AoE damage and then he has unyielding which can also result of uh, well obviously he can't die A and B some serious damage from this dude right so unlike a lot of even legendary defenders he can take a ton of damage because of that great shield and on top of that he can deal some damage as well prevent himself from dying as well gear raid 2 campaign sustained DPS in the arena obviously trial as well uh he He's one of my favorite defenders in the game. Coming in at number four is Gon. 
so Gon is a chaotic lord, very, very tough to get your hands on. His talent is damage scales off of defense, so that makes him incredibly unique, right? We can build him with a just a load of defense, and he can also deal some damage at the same time, making him incredibly, well, we just said it, unique. This dude's really, really cool, right? Uh, you can see his lord uh, ability here, again, very, very sought after, very difficult to get your hands on. He has a cost reduction in the arena by five, which brings him all the way down to a 14 cost in the arena. He has a 19 normally with a three block here, okay? Uh, he has uh, dam attacks up to three enemies in range, 70% damage for each enemy. On Battlecry, his alt guys, it's gonna make him like an uber, uber tank. Increases block by three and grants physical damage reduction, magic damage reduction to all allies in range for 10 seconds. So we're supporting everybody else and just making him the ultimate blocker on the team as well. Uh, taking damage has 15% chance to attack 10 enemies ahead, 300% AoE damage. Again, you can pretty you can get some pretty insane extra damage from this dude as well. I mean, amazing damage booster for Chaos specifically, if you can get your hands on him. Campaign, Trial, Gear Raid 1, Gear Raid 2, uh, Arena as well. Uh, great for damage reduction, great for some AoE damage. He is really kind of uh, the best lord for a nice blend of defend and sustain dps Coming in at number three is Brokir. So Brokir and number two and number one, I had played extensively on my account, okay? Brokir, a lot of people say, I had Fastidious on the channel a while ago, and he, I think you want to say he said he was the number one. So again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That being said, he's amazing, right? What makes him so unique is the freeze synergy in this dude's kit, right? Great, great uh, freeze kind of uh, debuffs as well. And he's a defender, cost nine block of three he gains freeze on his frost armor okay equal to 80 percent of max hp during the effective freeze the freeze effect will disappear with the shield makes sense okay but look at the passive and how it synergizes with that ult receiving damage has a 10 percent chance but you can book that up to 15 percent chance of inflicting freeze on two enemies for one second if this fear of a hero has freeze, the chance will be increased to 20 or by, excuse me, 20%. He's landing a lot of freeze, is great built in control. When receiving fatal damage for the first time, he gains freeze and becomes immune to all damage for eight seconds. His basic talent is reduces adjacent allies damage taken by 10%, okay? If this hero has the freeze, the reduced damage is increased to 30% on this dude, okay? On his A1, inflicts freeze on up to five enemies around him when the shield is gone from the ultimate okay so awakened i do not have but i wish i did when this hero is inflicted with freeze increases uh received healing and shield effects by 20 percent on a3 and then when iceberg expires restores 100 percent of max hp on a5 yeah we wish we had that either way broke here is a really good tank gear a2 campaign tide trial you name it this guy's got your back uh let's move on to to the top two. So number two, and I thought about putting him number one, honestly. People say he's as good as a legendary. We get this guy for free. I think that when you open up Void uh, Rift, I think that you get Olog. Is that when it is? Level 30-ish, I think. Either way, everybody gets him, and he's so good. Like, every day, whenever I pull any of these other OP legendary uh, defenders, I'm like, maybe this is the day that I don't use Olog as much. And that day never comes. He is just insanely good. We're talking defenders. And what should defenders do? They should tank. And he is arguably the best tank in the game. At least he's right up there, right? Rank number two. Silver Shield is almost always active. His, his auto here. Every 12 seconds, cast a shield that can absorb damage equal to 50% of max HP, okay? It just keeps, like I said, it's almost always active, and that's not even his ultimate. His ultimate, it stops attacking and shifts to defensive stance for 25 seconds, increasing physical damage reduction by 40% and increasing his block as well from 3 to 4, all at 18 cost. This dude just doesn't die, you know, the best tanky defender in the game. What more, more do I have to say? I love Olog, if you couldn't tell. I'm sure a lot of you guys rely on this dude as well and probably agree with me. If you disagree, let me know why. Number one is the Nightmare Lord. 
Torador. So Torador, I mean, I love Olog, I do. And I don't want to take anything away from the dude or anybody on this list, because I love Brokir, you know, I want gone, right? And I could go down the line. But Torador for me is number one. I have him, and even despite the cost, you guys know I hate really high cost heroes. I try not to use them as often as low cost ones, but he is worth every one of the 25 costs that he takes. He is a Lord, like I said, from Nightmare. So we're already starting off with, with Wrath, and then we get Torador. He has the Wrath kind of uh, uh, Lord skills, but uh, Faction Allies basic attack has a 30% chance of landing an extra hit. He's, uh, they're, they're receiving, uh, excuse me, he is giving them a, a massive speed bonus up to 35%. I mean, just a great, great Lord defender in the game. Look at his talent, guys. Each attack inflicts defensive reduction by 20% on the target for five seconds. It helps all of our nukers do more damage, including him. He can deal some damage as well uh let's see but when additionally when toro is deployed or revived increases attack and defense by 20 percent for 15 seconds that's great check out his ultimate guys after activating increases self attack speed by 80 damage dealt by 80 percent and attacks multiple enemies within the range for 20 seconds it's really good, but it keeps getting better. <laughs> uh, each attack launch has an extra 20 or 30% chance to launch an AoE attack dealing 70% AoE damage and stun. Okay, how about Hellfire Resurgence? Revives him after his first death, restoring 50% HP, 60% Rage. That can be brought all the way up to 100% HP in Rage one time per deployment. So when he dies, he's not really dead. He keeps coming back to life. It's Torador the Zombie. I love this dude. He's my most used defender on my account. Uh, so I may be biased, but I'm sure a lot of people who have him probably think the same. He has great awakenings as well. Atrocious Dam, uh, a Trample Rage, range, excuse me, plus 20% on A1. I do not have him awakened at all, but boy, I wish I did. Faction Allies, attack speed plus 20 on his Lord skill on A2. During the effect of Hellfire Burning, increases the chance to trigger Atrocious Trample by 10%. We didn't get into that, you know, at, at, at length we can get his rage uh, regen and then hellfire resurgence can be triggered one more time per deployment aka he can come back to life twice uh when you get a5 again good luck on that but either way this guy is amazing there it is guys those are my top 10 defenders in the game ranked from 10 to 1 let me know where you agree and where you disagree thank you so much for watching and as always take care guys